And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Wednesday, January 30th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of the news stories for the day. The Navajo Nation is looking to fill up to 800 jobs at its newest casino opening this year near Flagstaff, Arizona. A job fair being held this upcoming weekend in Flagstaff will be used to fill accounting, human resources, marketing, hotel administration, food and beverage training, and other positions. Drug screening and background checks are being done on site and candidates could be offered a job on the spot. Navajos will be uh, given preferences for employment. The $150 million Twin Arrows Casino along Interstate 40 will have a hotel, conference center, spa and golf course, and it's scheduled to open up in mid-May. Navajo Nation now operates three casinos in New Mexico. The Twin Arrows Casino will be the first on the Arizona portion of their reservation. State and tribal officials have agreed to slash the maximum walleye harvest from one of Minnesota's most popular fisheries, the Mille Lacs Lake, by half this year. Fisheries officials on both sides last week agreed to cut the total quota to 250,000 pounds of walleye, down from 500,000 pounds last year. Sue Erickson, spokeswoman for the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, said earlier this week the quota will be cut in half for both sports and tribal anglers. Studies indicate the lake's walleye population has been declining, and a survey based on netting data last fall suggested that the walleye numbers were at a 40-year low, though the total kill for sports and tribal anglers has remained below the maximum targets the last few years. A special ceremony was held on January 29th to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the Bear River Massacre in the Cache Valley, just north of the Utah-Idaho line. The Northwest Band of the Shoshone Nation planned a presentation at the site of the deadly tragedy near Preston, Idaho, about 100 miles north of Salt Lake City. Uh, the Daughters of Utah Pioneers Historical Marker designates the spot on U.S. Highway 91 near milepost 13.1. As many as 500 women, children, and tribal elders were killed on January 29, 1863, when Colonel Patrick Edward Connor led the California Volunteers in an attack on a friendly encampment of the Shoshone near the confluence of the Bear River and Beaver Creeks. The site was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1990. And today we talk with Shoshone Bannock tribal member Mark Trahant, who previews the upcoming budget cuts with or without sequestration, which is some type of high-level level political language for the budget cuts are coming. Mark Trahan, thanks for joining with us again today on the Native News Update. Tell me a little bit about what you see coming down the pike with all this discussion about more budget cuts, austerity, and the politics of Washington, D.C. Tell us what Indian country should be watching for. Well, I've been saying for uh, quite a while that major, severe austerity is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, it really didn't matter who won the election. That it was a choice between deep austerity and austerity light. And uh, we're kind of hitting that now. And that's just the mood of the country and Congress is to cut. Um, it really is uh, frustrating because if you look at the history of the United States, the 1929 market crash set off uh, the Great Depression. But it wasn't that bad. And it started to get much better. And then in Congress, they decided to cut again uh, a few years later. And that's when the real hard part of the Great Depression started it's like none of these folks have ever read a history book because they're making the same damn mistakes. And the mistake is, is that as the recession settles in, it may take government projects, services, and employment to help stimulate the economy up. Is that the basic rule on the opposite end of budget cutting? Right, right. In fact... Um, measures they're taking have already, um, just today, the numbers came out that showed the economy is in contraction for the quarter. And so it's halfway to the definition of a technical recession, which is two quarters in recession. If the sequester hits, there's absolutely no way we won't be in, in a, a, um, another recession because government spending is dropping so rapidly. And it's not just domestic spending, but the big one is military spending. Um, 
it supports a lot of jobs across the country in communities. I mean, you drive around Idaho, for example, where I live, and you see forest service offices, you see a Bureau of Land Management, you see all these kind of programs. In order to make the numbers work from this sequester, they're talking about furloughs anywhere between 10 and 20 percent. That's a lot of money to take out of the economy uh, almost all at once. How does that filter down to state governments and county governments, which seem to be in the same contractive mode? Does that become accumulatively what we seem to be experiencing? Is is a total drop off in governmental employment opportunities, putting people into the unemployment lines with the private sector not moving as fast to create jobs that replace them. And so you have a net gain of more people unemployed. Right. That's exactly right. And there's really good evidence on how this works throughout the world. I mean, this played out in Japan about uh, 12 years ago, and Japan still has not recovered from that. In fact, a new government was just elected promising more spending. Uh, the United Kingdom is going through it right now, and again, their spiral has already started down. Uh, much of Europe has started down. Um, for Indian country, I just think this has some really, I mean, one of the frustrating parts is that we need to have an educated, vibrant workforce. And that means we need to invest in young people. One of the very first pressures we're going to see is on tribal colleges. They're the most cost-effective delivery of education probably on the planet, but certainly in the country, and yet we're going to hit them hard, and it just, to me, makes no sense. Was that going to be an admin or student assistant scholarships? It's going to be across the board. I wrote a piece today about Haskell, and in order to make the numbers work at Haskell Indian Nations University, they're talking about a 29% budget cut. There goes the athletic programs, perhaps, over academics. or I mean, they, they've got to figure out where and what's yeah. going to go. And the truth is, is that with budget cuts on scholarships and funding to go to school, it's not only a budget cut, but a loss of students and the tuition fee at the same time, isn't it? And we're looking already at the, the student debt for this generation is the highest it's ever been recorded. There's more student debt now than mortgages. Uh, the one thing that's protected from sequester is Pell Grants, and that's certainly a good thing. But things that are taken out of that are uh, work-study and uh, other transition programs for college students. So the impact will be great. What about Indian Health Service? After we got through this uh, health care plan, uh, those budget cuts are going to impact the health budget as well, Indian Health Service and ancillary services? Yeah, the ruling was that the Indian Health Service is not uh, is an appropriated program, and therefore it gets the full budget cut from the sequester. Uh, there was hope that it would be uh, the same as Medicare and Medicaid, but that didn't happen. Um, where there's hope is that uh, Medicaid is growing and Medicaid is untouched. So the more that tribes can get their people signed up for Medicaid, it could help supplement that 10% budget cut. But the transition is not going to be easy. Uh, there's a really interesting twist. A lot of the, particularly the Great Plains tribes, have argued that the treaty requires the federal government to operate the Indian Health Service, and they have not wanted to contract for those programs. The direct service programs are the ones that are going to get hit first and hard because they don't have any contracts to act as buffers. Uh, the buffer, the contracts give some time at least for people to figure it out because there's a set contract. So those tribes that have an administrative contract with Indian Health Service may fare better on the initial end of this right. budget cutting session. What about things like uh, Indian education, the high schools, the middle schools, systems, and or Indian housing? HUD. Indian housing will get hit uh, very hard. Again, uh, multiple probably low double digits, 10, 11, 12 percent. I'm actually working on those numbers to get some more accurate ones. Uh, schools for the short term will probably be okay because so much of it is forward funding uh, to get through this semester. But the Bureau, of, and one of the problems is getting information. Uh, OMB has got a really tight limit on what agencies can release. Uh, fortunately, I'm now at the point where people are sending stuff out of official channels. And uh, that's helping a lot. But we need to get better information. Um, 
public radio. Yeah, you mentioned that the other day. What do you know about that? Same, same yeah, chopping block? Yeah, for CPP-funded programs. Um, neighborhood of 10% and uh, fairly quickly. So what's going to happen to Big Bird? Is he going to forfeit a wing or two or a, a <laughs> drumstick or what? How is that going to work? Uh, Big Bird himself will be fine, but uh, I think the bigger issue is community radio, community mm -hmm. television that uh, operates at pretty low cost anyway. Uh, right. Those are the programs that are going to really have to find some new revenue uh, to match what the federal government's been doing. Roads and services, uh, the trust relationship. The trust relationship just came out of a billion dollar settlement and now you're saying that perhaps there's going to be cuts in the management of the trust accounts because they have to cut back. Yep. Yeah, it's automatic. I mean, the great um, tragedy of the sequester is that it's a blunt instrument. It's across the board and virtually no one is spared. It's just going to be painful all the way around. On the other end of budget cuts, tribes facing budget cuts, what is the answer on their end in response? Creating small business sector jobs, um, simply cutting and writing it out? Uh, how should tribes, you, at one time you said they should be planning for this and set it aside money. I don't, I don't know very many tribes who have ever op operated on the basis of setting aside money for the future. Most of them are driven by cash flow through uh, either grants or through the casino revenues. How should they be at? What should be doing for the long run? What's the plan for the next five or six years that they should be looking at in regards to how to deal with these budget cuts at the state and federal level? Well, one way is to start rethinking what tribes should use their power for as governments in terms of taxing. Uh, one, for example, the tribes have used quite a bit is the gas tax. Uh, I hate to say it, but the gas tax is a dead tax. It The sooner you can get rid of it, the better. Um, miles per uh, car is dropping considerably. People are getting higher use vehicles. Um, people are driving less. All of that combines to mean it's not a good revenue source for the future. It means that the revenue sources from it are dropping unless you increase the taxes to compensate right. for the loss of volume. But even then, in five years, you're going to have more electric cars on the vehicle. They'll be using the roads but not using any gas. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it really is a dead tax. Uh, one thing tribes can do is to start rethinking um, other sorts of taxes. Uh, one I've always thought would work would be um, an income tax that starts in the $50,000 and up range. So you don't hit most of your citizens, but those who are having good years can contribute. And um, maybe even 75000 but just something to start getting a revenue stream coming in. Is there a argument that the tribal communities simply need to dig back into history and become more self-sufficient at all levels? People used to take care of themselves. Absolutely. Families used to take uh, care of each other. Clans used to take care of the housing needs and everything. Is there a need to regroup or is that the opposite of a capitalistic society? Well, it is the opposite, but I think eventually that's where we have to go. I mean tribes to survive some enormous things, including scarcity. So this isn't the first time at the bat. Um, we'll, we'll get through this and it's going to be rough. I think we need to preserve institutions. So things like tribal colleges and radio stations, uh, we ought to do what we can to keep going. Um, but everything else I think we ought to rethink. And even colleges. I mean, what programs could be done online rather than in a facility? Uh, are there ways to deliver that even cheaper? Uh, those are the kind of conversations that would be great to see. Those are the kinds of decisions that are changing uh, industries dramatically. For example, the paperless society and how it relates to paper mills in northern Wisconsin or uh, other activities where uh, newspapers have gone out of business because in some places you don't need newspapers. It's all online. Exactly. So the whole paradigm is shifting into something unknown. We'll have to keep in touch with you because you seem to have at least have, have some ideas about where we might be going with that. Anything else you want to leave with our uh, watchers today? Uh, no, the Austerity blog is getting a good community on Facebook, so if people want to contribute, uh, just go onto Facebook and look for Indian Country and Austerity. Okay, Indian Country Austerity, if they're Googling it, or is that a URL? or? Uh, you can go to my website, and that's an easy place to find it, marktrahant.org. Everything starts there. Thanks for joining yeah. with us today, Mark. Okay.
Good enough. Good. We got her. A uh, good discussion amidst all the other stuff that's going on. Actually, the revenues in some of our communities in northern Wisconsin seem to be rising up, and a lot of tribes went through a lot of budget cut cutting. So the question is, is now they're beginning to actually see a little black on some of the books in some places, I'm hearing. The question is whether they decide to just go in and spend it or try to figure out whether they need to cushion it, like you said before. So. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of people are beginning to worry about the impact. Worry about the impact on government. And I can't. Yeah, I just worry about youth. I mean, the government's going to be fine and everything else, but we can't let this generation not get educated. Yeah, that's interesting because that's that's what I was saying. It's got to do about the future. We know how to somehow feed ourselves from our stores and our corn corn that's stocks. Right. <laughs> you still grinding? Oh yeah. Man, I'm going to have to get a bag of that blue corn from someone one of these days. Okay. Um, Get some together. Uh, and, and in return, uh, we'll send you some musky eggs or um, some uh, Whatever walleye cheese. Whatever think would work out here. <laughs> okay, sounds good. We'll talk to you again soon, Mark. Okay. Um, uh, quickly, we uh, did a contract uh, with the Lacoudere tribe here for some production stuff. Got a meeting coming up with Shakopee. Uh, the Bad River tribe is looking at trying to hire us to do some video projects too. So little by little, I think we got some incremental things going on here that are a little bit different. Okay. Uh, we'll see where it all goes, and if we do the Shakopee meeting, uh, we may be able to launch something big, but we're at least surviving, and uh, with if we get the, the Bad River contract, we'll be able to operate pretty good within the next six months just as a basis without any franticness. And the longer we're around, the less debt we have. So we'll let you know Sounds what happens. Good. All right. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Take care. And that is another roundup of news from Indian Country. On this edition of the Native News Update, we want to say miigwech for joining with us and come back again soon.